and welcome to the Zooming Who's podcast. I'm your host, Dustin Husky. And I'm Kurt Ansourpuss. What do we have for today? Oh my god, dude. My day. <laughs> Life will never be the same at Walmart. Life will never be the same at my work <laughs> today, because something glorious happened too, but I'll let you go first. Okay, well, okay, update. Uh, and recap, in case anybody didn't listen to the last episode... So, uh, there was a death threat made against me. Did I mention that the last podcast? The death threat happened on Monday. So well, I guess yes, I did so yesterday. So I didn't mention it in any podcast yet. No, okay, because, so, because you had to mention it today. That's right. So, yeah, I uh, nobody's heard this. Uh, somebody made a uh, pretty nonchalant uh, LOL death threat. Uh, to me. Yeah. At work, which, you know, not really cool, but the 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 whole gist of it, I don't want to get into the huge details, but basically uh, I was in the middle of doing my job and someone decided to, we'll call her Karen, uh, decided to step on my toes a little bit and uh, help herself to what I was working on. And, uh, I didn't realize this till she was already in there. We have a little back room, uh, kind of a giant fridge mm -hmm. that we store all of our vegetables, fruit that need to be chilled. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was going back and forth between two sides of it. And when I came back to pick up the last bit of my um, freight that I was pulling out, uh, she had wedged herself back into my side. So when I walked in there, now she's essentially trapped. Okay. Which is the basis of this death threat. Okay. Because I had, quote unquote, trapped her. And I'm so foreboding and, you know. You're such a evil looking, aggressive poos. Yep. You you are a uh, you are a predator poos. Yep. So I had two uh, forty pound things of zucchini to pull out. And that didn't scare you. And that didn't scare me. Doesn't never scares me. And um, and then I was done. I w I didn't mind that she took over, because all she had to do was the top stuff, which is smaller boxes, you know, real light stuff. You just throw down. But I, I went back there to grab my my forty pound crates, and I wasn't gonna let somebody stop me because I was almost done. And she was, right there. She wasn't in my way, but when I pull them out, now I'm essentially blocking her in. And she thought it'd be funny to mention to me, and I quote, "I have a permit for a concealed carry." <laughs> I didn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't laugh either. Because <laughs> it really wasn't funny to me. And I know she, she, uh, I think she thought it would be funny to mention in passing, but it didn't come off that way. And I think she was wondering if it, that it would like go over your head as to what that actually means. I know but... what a concealed carry is. Because, because you're living with firearms who's. Yeah. And we've actually discussed this a few times on like very, what it means and whatnot. Yeah, more than so one you so you're very familiar with certain terms. Yeah. And I also would be not impressed with that at all. Yeah. The so, idea that oh well I have a concealed carry, what about it? Yeah. What are you gonna do about it? What are you saying? What are you getting at? You know. Are you saying that I'm threatening you that? Do you need to shoot me to get me out of your way? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, not not the best thing to say to a to a fellow worker, Walmart employee. Uh, I went through it in my head a couple times, and then I finally decided uh, I'm going to go directly to my own supervisor. Yeah. Before I go to the store manager, before I go to HR, before I go to, through all the process, all these people, I'm going to give my supervisor a chance to deal with this. 
I'm gonna do I'm gonna go I'm gonna do the right thing what my tutorial video told me to do because God knows how my supervisor would have reacted if I went over there's her. a tutorial video oh yeah we have videos on everything we deal with in case of spilled zucchini and if you're a cat do not panic they have reenactments of what to do if there's a, a, a shooter in the in the building they reenacted like uh, with with gunshots firing and everything well the sound effects as well not the actual bullets but it was blanks I yeah, guess but... blanks you can call it sure. or actually it could have been edited into I'm sure it was too, edited yeah. in but I was, doubt they would have <laughs> but it was well acted I, I will say it was well it's well acted are you saying that Walmart pays actors good money mm -hmm. actually no paid money for good actors yeah I don't think All they were right. actors I think they were store employees you know what? I think some commercials got to get their act and got got to get their act in, in gear because hey, you you hear that Walmart's paying some some, some big dough for uh, We have radio DJs. We have radio DJs. Yeah. I want that job. Walmart Radio. You only have to work 1 hour every day. And then the other DJ does the other hour. And the rest of the time is just pre-recorded songs that play in the exact same order every day that's boring yeah it's awful if i want to dj they should dj have... all day long or at least for for an entire shift if i have to work eight hours or nine hours i'm going to play soviet wave yeah but anyway so i i, I kind of de derailed your conversation okay. so so you went back to your tutorial videos and how to deal with this well no i just use that with the idea in my, my mind I, I, I remember the steps I'm supposed to take so I went to my supervisor I let her know about this and of course her reaction was pretty actually she reacted better than I expected because I kind of expected her to kind of fluff it off like oh it's just Carol she's just kidding oh. no she took it very seriously which I appreciate because it should be taken seriously you don't threaten someone with the in intent of a firearm or right. however the law is written as. You just don't say, hey, uh, I have a pickup truck. Are you going to try to roam, like, run me over? Run me over? Yeah. So, it's not to say that the, like, it's a direct act of saying something that you're going to do, but it's like, given the hint of, I can do this. It's a roundabout way of saying it. Yeah. Yeah. So she reacted appropriately, which I was actually in shock. Uh, and she went and talked to our um, our human resources guy in the store. Okay. Uh, and this is the getcha that, that I was, my mouth was ajar. Because um, I told you all of that before. Uh -huh. But I didn't tell you this. So she went and talked to him. She came back and she said, she pulled me aside and she said this should not, this doesn't need to go anywhere beyond just you and me. And I'm like, that's fine, that's fine, no big deal. She's like, no, you have to understand. This is her third strike. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. She, so this is habitual. Yes. She's done this before. Two other times. You have to wonder if she even actually owns a gun. She just wants to get fired from Walmart. But then that's like the worst way to get fired is, hey... It's you hard to get fired away from, from Walmart. You have to literally try grab a TV and walk out the front door with it. They might that might still be a strike against you and say, uh, nice try, Phil. Get back to work. Get back to work. Put that TV back. But no. Third strike. Third strike. Which in baseball rules You're out. Yeah. Now does that mean a permanent out from that from Walmart period or just I that think store? At this point, it would mean that she's either temporarily suspended yeah. with uh, an assessment that they have to do on her. I don't know if she needs, she needs this job. Well, obviously, uh, he's not doing a very good job at wanting to keep it. No, not when you're threatening people with a firearm. I don't care if the firearm isn't even on her. Just mentioning it, and I know there's people out there that have... Especially that there are some unstable people 
that own a firearm that probably shouldn't because mentally they're not stable enough to even be responsible with one. Right, like your own uh, dumpster fire that you've dealt with. Yeah. Ugh. But I mean, even without even having it on you, at work, it's dumb to threaten a coworker. Yeah, it's not. It's not really appropriate. Because you can lose your job over it. Not only that, but th you could file charges against a person for yeah. threatening. I could. And you know what? The police would pro I don't know what the police would probably do. They'd probably laugh it off or they may do they something. They would laugh it off. They would laugh it off. Which is stupid because you would think that's what their job is to say, hey, look, you can't go threatening people. We're going to give you a heavy fine or, you know, something to punish people and say, hey, look, you just can't do this. Yeah. We're not sending you to jail. Right. But because you threaten someone, you're going to have to do some kind of community service 20 hours somehow. I don't know. So the police report wouldn't go anywhere. But through Walmart, it's good to know that they take things seriously and to know if this is if, if she had three strikes before on that issue alone, not mm. any other, uh, or... Or she's a firecracker of, of, of a mouth that she said other stupid things before in the past to get her three strikes. Yeah. Because I'm it's a hard I'm I'll be hard pressed to know that every single strike she's gotten so far. <laughs> Aw, sneezing cat. Now he's licking his nose for mucus. As all cats do. ASMR licking. AMSR licking. Mm, um, yum, mucus. Mucus, cat mucus. Well, dogs do it too, so dog mucus. So yeah, third strike for Karen at my store. We'll call that's, her Karen anyway. That's sad, but then again, I'm not surprised with the with the nature of this report. Yeah. Yeah. So. What happened to you? Oh, okay, so. Pretty much a recap of yesterday. Everyone kind of, like everyone and everyone kind of ganged up on me. Why? For no reason. They just th felt it was a good time to get on my case for I really don't know what reason. We just had a really stupid busy day. So everyone was obviously bored. Oh god, you have no idea bored and busy at the same time, which I don't know why that exists, but it does. And um I'm, yeah, at that very moment yesterday, I am more than convinced, especially with what happened today, I am more than convinced I need to find a new job at some point soon. Um, fed up with this place. You know, I'm okay. fed up with this world. Okay, on a very serious level. I got yes. so depressed yesterday. I know. That it's not to say the act of suicide came across my mind but I thought hmm death then that's when I snapped out of it and said wait a minute killing myself over this job is not worth it because this job is certainly not worth it God, no. or any or any other job definitely not that's when I remember my friends telling me in the past in the past year actually yeah, in the past year the way I've described this job to my friends they've all said get out and they say, ah, I'll stick around as long as I can until I get fed up with it. I'm getting to that. Actually, no, it's not getting to it. I'm at that point where I'm fed up with it now. Yep. Um, when you get to the point where, and it was not really serious, but it, it went through my mind as, huh, I'm that depressed where I'm thinking about that. Mm -hmm. That's the very moment where you need to look for a different career. Um, where, not career, but possibly job, but if you do that to every job you go to, it could just be your career as well. Right. But I was at that moment where I realized, my friends were telling this the whole time. To get out of there. I need to get the fuck out of here, yeah. because this will kill me. Can I just say? What? Um, when things get that awful, the best thing I do for myself at my job is I remind myself, it's only Walmart. It's only a job. That's exactly what I was saying to myself yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. This is only a job. There are many like them. Yep. Yeah. 
both good and crappy. I can I could find another job just yes, to get away from this one. Good. If it's a good job, perfect. You're, if it's a bad job, you know what? I'll keep looking. Right. You're a good employee and someone else deserves to have you as their employee. So so pretty much going from yesterday into today, again, apparently my coworker Tony talks about, you know, how the boss complains that he works too fast, but then he also complains about me that I work too slow. However, of the whole department, I have the least amount of issues. I've only had one recorded issue in the 18 months, actually no, 20 months that I've been here at this company, which is fantastic because most cases, a lot of people make mistakes almost on a daily basis. So to only have one mistake in almost two years that I've been here is pretty fantastic. That's because I actually take my time in doing my job right the first time. However, to my boss, that's too slow. However, he's never had to pull me in his office to talk about stuff that I messed up on. Because it doesn't happen. Because I take my time. Whereas he complains about my friend and coworker Tony, who works way too fast for his own good. Like, the, the guy can move, but that's the thing. When you move too fast at a job, you start making mistakes left and right. Is it really worth moving fast anyway? Right. And there's a thing called too slow, where you're dragging your feet all day. Me, I'm just making sure I'm doing things just right. So my, you know, me and a coworker in, in the back of the warehouse were talking about mortality and whatnot, how um, th this... This older gentleman, Dwayne, everyone at my department's nice. It's just for some reason yesterday they all turned into major assholes. But today was all fine. I was talking with, with Dwayne about, you know, mortality and whatnot, which is a very, very odd thing to talk about considering yesterday for me. Um, and he was talking about how his former boss and his father had died in the same month in August 27 years ago. Wow, that's morbid. Um, so, you know, he was thinking about that, and we were just kind of talking about that. We were doing pretty good for the day. Things are being cleaned up. Things are being put away. We're well under, like, like, to getting ourselves cleaned up at the end of the day, like, go home clean. We were totally on that route. So, for once, I decided to have a small chit-chat with my coworker, which doesn't happen too often, but, you know, as I mentioned before, my boss can talk his ears off for hours and hours without end to his uh, fuck buddy, Rich, out in IT. Yet any moment we, as co-workers in the department, have a chance to just talk to shit while doing work, he gets angry and tells us to keep Get working. Get back to work. Yeah. Yep. Uh, which means only he can talk, which is dumb. Mm hmm Suddenly, he comes walking around the corner with his hands in his pockets, and he says, Hey, uh, we got stuff to do. It's like, walks away. We both look at each other and like, what the fuck was that about? Because he was literally sitting on his ass, and this is around... I think this is around 2.15, 2.30 in the day. And we are 80% to... 90% done. We're on the home stretch. We'll get everything done, which ended up we did. Mm -hmm. So, not like we were pressed for time. And he has the gall to tell us that, hey, we got work to do when he was sitting on his ass all day not helping us. Hmm. And this is a daily occurrence for the last year. He's been sitting on his ass. And e Eating popcorn? Yeah. But anyway, so... That being the only negative part of the whole day, I ignored the rest. And apparently at the end of the day, something glorious happened. I have never been so happy and more jealous of another human being in my life. My coworker Tony? Mm -hmm. My boss, Ryan, told him to disinfect all the pallet jack handles, the lift handles, anything that, that we touch on a daily basis to spray down at the end of the day. And uh, Tony grabbed the bottle. My boss is about to walk out the door. And 
Tony was going to spray a handle. However, he had the handle pointed towards my boss, uh -oh. sprayed it, and it, he walked into a spray of disinfectant, <laughs> which is 70% isopropyl alcohol yeah. and 30% water. And mm -hmm. it smells like ass at the same time. He walked directly into it, it <clears throat> and then walked out the door. <laughs> And he just looked at me, and I looked at him. We literally high five and say, "Fuck yeah, that was the best thing that's ever ever happened." <laughs> and he you, sort of planned it too. You just disinfected your boss. Oh, he needs to take a bath in it, and he's still filthy. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh my god. Oh, and also too, mm. I was not the only one being attacked yesterday at my job. Tony, me, and him usually get shit on in this whole department. For the most part, because apparently I work too slow, Tony works too fast, so everyone's got something to complain about. Yep. Although, when the slowest person leaves a company, who then becomes the slowest? And then all of a sudden, they're the target now. Um, the boss came to Tony after he pissed him off a few times yesterday, asked him, do you feel like quitting? The boss said this? The boss said this to Tony. Okay. Do you feel like quitting? And Tony decided playing mind games with you and say, "Oh, well, what? Well, what makes you think that?" Oh, never good to reply to a superior with another question. Reply to their question with another question. Sometimes it's the only way to uh, handle. Because um, I think he was actually serious about it, asking him if he was about to quit, which. I never think fast on my feet like that. Tony's always... a smart ass, but he's a good smart ass. Um, me, I'm actually totally surprised because he, he goes to Tony, and while he does quite a bit for the company, I do a fuck ton more, and I'm surprised he's never asked me that one bit because I think he's afraid to know the answer. Because who knows, I might snap one day and tell him a lot more, or I'm just going to say, no, no, I'm going to stay here for a while. And then totally lie as I find a job sometime this fall. Um, uh -huh. And then if you ever ask me again, like, no, I didn't say that. And <laughs> just play stupid with them. <laughs> no, wait, no, I actually didn't say that. You must have heard wrong. Um, it was the other guy. But yeah, but it was interesting that he actually asked, are you thinking about quitting? And hmm. this is a department that is already two people down. In he's, the last two months. He's fishing, literally, at that point. Yeah. I think he's only trying to make a situation worse. Yeah. Like, he um, wants him to quit. I don't think he expects me to quit, but I would be amazed if he's that dumb to not realize that I plan on leaving at some point. Um, definitely not tomorrow, probably not next week, but I definitely plan on getting the fuck out of this company uh, soon or by the end of the year, but I don't think even by the end of the year I want to stay there because that would erode my mental sanity even more. Um, since I've worked at this company, we're down 10 people. And that's, it is... That's pretty bad. In how many months? 20. So basically, you lost a person every other month. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. And my what boss... What is wrong with this fucking... And my Marsh, boss... Marsh Electronics, is that what it's called? Yeah. My boss... Remind me never to do business with them. My boss thinks he's the holiest thing on the planet. Yeah, I can't and he wait actually, for him to get his ass kicked out of there. He doesn't understand why people are leaving. He's so far up his own ass. He he's actually, like, Everybody that's left was under him. Yeah. Is that correct? Yep. One guy, nobody sees this as a problem? One guy was a return worker... Came back after three days, remembered why he stopped working there, and then quit on the spot. <clears throat> wow. After three days, because he actually needed the money, and then realized, actually, I don't need money that badly. And he decided not to show up next Monday. He came back on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, weekend, and then no show. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we let him go. Who did your interview when you, when you applied there? My boss. And... He did an interview today, and you know what? That piece of shit put on his good face on. Of course he did. Um, yeah, immediately that will go away the first day you were up there. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he does not 
put what up. What was good... your interview like? How how did, how how is his interview skills? You know what? It's funny because he's from my from my resume, which has a lot of stuff on it. He was expecting someone twice my age to show up. Yeah. He was not expecting a 25-year-old with the amount of experience and interests that was on that resume that he thought, yeah. It, so he was actually felt like, oh, cool, I, I have a young kid for once, which is kind of strange, but... Right, because they, they see potential because you're younger. Although it's to more exploit me because... Right, you don't expect as much money. Yeah. They wanted me $9 an hour, which I said no, I, I'd, I'd rather walk. Talk about a slap in the face. Oh, yeah. Um, and he still yeah. treats me l like a moron, despite my mechanical engineering degree. He still treats me like I'm dumb as rocks, which, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use that somehow in my exit interview that I'm using my engineering degree now to, uh, <laughs> to better myself. Um, but he put his nice face on today, like he did for me. And you know what was funny? I didn't think of it then, but he says, you know how hard it is to find workers these hmm. these days? No, it's not so much to find workers. Oh, find He's workers burned so team. many bridges with them um, that actually did join the team and then left. Because uh, he thinks they're all lazy because they just want to work, get some money, and then leave. No, what happens is they work for two weeks to a month, realize the boss is a total shithead, Yep. Then decides to quit because he either found a better job that isn't treating him like a shithead or quit on the spot saying, you know what, I can't take your bullshit. Mm -hmm. And apparently there were more people that were gone even before I was here and I started counting the people who have been gone since I've been there. Um, yeah, he must really he must really love himself enough to not realize why people are leaving. Yeah, because... Yeah, like, he sounds oblivious to... Oh, he, he, he totally is. I swear he has no idea how to do his own job. And me and Tony, having been here less than two years, can understand what he does, mm -hmm. that we could do his job. But, I mean, like, he, he doesn't understand why these people are leaving. He's lying to himself. Oh, yeah. If he doesn't Which realize. explains why he asked Tony yesterday, hey, are you thinking about quitting? Is it more of, is he afraid to lose someone more that he can't afford to lose, which he can't afford to lose me because I do too much, which I plan on leaving anyway because you know what? Um, fuck that asshole. You know what? The company certainly deserves better, but the company is also corrupt in its own way. You know what? Fuck the company. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not getting much out of it. I'm, I'm as going... I have climbed up the ladder as high as I can go, but financially, that financial ladder is totally closed on me. I'll never go any. Uh, I'll never be able to go any higher than I am right right now. So yeah, my boss is so in love with himself. Mm -hmm. um, Has to be. And he's so narcissistic. That's why, he's so narcissistic. He only cares about two things in his life. Action or three, beer his dogs, and his lawn. He literally, on a Friday, no, no, Sunday afternoon, because he tells this to the same people over and over again, because he thinks he's the most interesting man in the world, uh, waters his lawn for a few hours, gets on a uh, lawn chair, cracks open a beer, watches his dogs play in his yard, while listening to music while watching his yard. How pathetic. I'm sorry. I and he does to, that the entire Sunday. I don't mean to judge oh, someone please. else. But I mean, if someone else that we know does that, but my God. I'm sorry. What a worthless human being. So, I have a plan. And then, and then we can talk about something else. But I have a plan. And if someone can share me a link of anywhere you might be able to find this, I want to buy... Hundreds of plastic little penises. No. Can be colorful, whatever. What I plan on doing is I want to buy a bag of small, tiny penises. Hide some around the warehouse. Because I don't give a fuck anymore. Because you know what? I'm so done with this company. Even if if, even if they found out it, it, it was me and do anything to me, I'll just simply leave and say, you know what? It was worth the time being here to 
make fun of a loser of a boss, like absolute worthless human being. Yeah. Throw it, throw it in the back of his pickup truck because it doesn't have a tonneau cover, literally an open bed. So I want to throw a a penis, a plastic penis, in the back of his truck every day, just to see how long he notices. Because, um, and I'm going to probably f hide him in different places, like uh, under his windshield wipers or uh, in his grill. I, I, as, I as, as, as much as you should never fuck around with someone's personal stuff, I don't believe in key scratching or denting someone's property. That's that's above me. How, well, below me? Above me, below me? I, I don't know. Below you. Below me, yeah. You, you wouldn't stoop that low. No. However, I would play some games with people at this point. Something that's not going to really hurt anyone, but I would love to see what they would do. You should fill his entire truck bed with penises. I'm, on my last day, you know what? All shapes and sizes. Real molds of penises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I seriously think the man is somewhat gay... For how strange he actually is, he does say the word gay so many times. Not that it's a bad thing. No. It's, to be gay, of course. Like, he, like Seinfeld says. Yeah. Not that it's a bad thing. It's um. pretty much... He, he talks to this rich dude every day for about 45 minutes to two hours a day. Rich in IT. Rich in IT, and I also think he doesn't know how to do his job because there's nothing for him to do. Whether if he's that damn good of his job, he just he just literally made himself unemployed because he did such a good job that he's got nothing to do, and I don't know why the company pays him or puts him on call and he gets to do something else in his time. Who is this, Rich or... or your... May as well do it to both because they're both worthless... Um, or, since Rich likes to show up in the shipping and warehouse department so much, when I leave, he can take my position. Because he looks like he's got nothing else better to do, that he could do this stuff, and probably could do the stuff that I'm doing. I mean, IT, what does IT stand for again? We looked it up once. Information technology. Is it? I thought it was something else. I think it's information technology or something like that. Um, yeah, my... I think those two like each other, and I don't know, I'm just assuming. However, those two go to lunch together. And yeah, it's cool to go to lunch with a coworker and whatnot, but when you do it every day, for an hour, whether if they do anything or not, I don't know, but they need tweezers to poke at their Tic Tacs, because... The masculinity off them is so You're annoying. Right. You're right. It's information technology. Right. Anyway, so here's a segue. Mm. Gay. 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 That's a segue to another uh, to another subject oh. that. Um, <clears throat> That you and me actually notice. Yeah. In this community, and not so much the same, but I notice it in similar instances in the furry community, in terms of being known in popularity and whatnot, and how every climb has a decline, and people don't realize it until they're at the decline that they realize, oh, so this is what I've been doing this whole time. Do you want to uh, introduce this uh, subject to Kurdan? Well, um, if you're talking about the gay thing. Yes. Like the. So we're talking about, uh, I guess, specifically gay men in the LGBTQ community that um, are handsome, beautiful, big dick, perfect. youth, perfect people that are untouchable in the gay community treat others who aren't like them like unwanted people and then when they reach a certain age or lose relevancy they then realize oh i was an ass i i call them the top tier or top shelf gays the top shelf gays yeah 
So they are like they come in a velvet bag or something. Yeah. Their yep. balls are in a velvet bag. They're kept behind the counter till you have enough money to buy them. Um, and not only that, but you have to show a special membership card because they're even selective too. Oh. Like who they talk to. Well, the only reason I brought this up is because in my AD account, on just like a complete random, I just, the first thing I started following on my AD account, the very first thing that I first started, when I first made my AD account, mm -hmm. was like sports. Sports people, right? Sports uh, teams and stuff. Oh, okay. And that was getting me nowhere, so I was like, okay. Because you were looking at spandex butts. Yeah, you know, and uh, football butts and wrestling butts and all the butts. <laughs> then I found, like, um, oh, what did I find after that? Oh, porn stars. Okay. But I did find some interesting ones, too. I found, like, this one lady. She's, actually, there's two of them, but one of them... Uh, that I still follow, and she replies to me all the time. Uh, God, I can't remember her name. I'll have to look it up. I'll link it in the, the description below later. Um, she's British, and she's got huge lips, and they call themselves <laughs> the Cock Destroyers. <laughs> <laughs> the Cock Destroyers. And they have, like... the. I guess double D or beyond double D, like huge. I, my mind went to two places when you said cock destroyers. Yeah. One, exactly what you think it is. And two, the ship destroyer with like <laughs> a penis front end. Yes. But go on. So, I'm, I, Sophie, Sophie B. Anderson, I believe is her name. She's... She puts out phenomenal content. Like, it's hilarious. Okay. Um, so she has fun with it, and she yes. shares the fun Oh, with my God, yeah. It. She's, I mean, like, I have nothing but good things to say about her. Because there's porn, but when you get good porn that yeah. is enjoyable for everyone to watch. Not even just porn. Life. It's just her and her friends walking around, being idiots at clubs. Destroying in, dicks? Talking about destroying dicks. Uh, in the middle of a shoot in a porn, they go out on the balcony and they're waving to people that are walking by on the bridge and their their tits are shaking and they're like, hi, sweeties. And they're just she like... She shakes around, one tit smacks the back. And you can see the people reacting. One guy, I think, almost fell into the water. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's just... It's legit quality content. But then I found them through other porn stars, mainly a lot of gay or... A lot of gay for pay, uh, straight men do, doing gay porn accounts. Then I hooked up, well, not hooked up, but found, uh, I was just looking up wrestlers, literally wrestlers, and I found this kid who was a fan of some musical art, uh, what is her name? Billie Eilish. Okay. Uh, and then I found all the, uh, the Stan accounts. If you don't know what Stan is or standing, uh, you have to look into, uh, oh, what's the white rapper's name? Slim Shady, what's his name? Oh, my God. I don't follow rap music, so I don't know. <sighs> Fuck, I, I don't know. You know either. what? We'll just we'll gloss over okay, that. Whatever. The guy, the, the white rapper, he made a movie. You guys know who he is, I'm sure. Uh, but in one of his songs, he talks about standing somewhere. Or being a stan, which basically just means a fan. But not just a fan, like dedicating all your time and all your effort to just loving this one celebrity or this one oh. musical star or this one mu movie Obsess star. Obsessive. Almost obsessive, but, but not quite that far. I don't know. Actually, probably is. That sounds kind of like people that are heavily into popufers that that's all they ever talk about yeah i'm sure that there's and it's one thing that if you really like someone that's one thing yeah when you only hear one thing about a person the whole time it gets overdone then you almost worry for the person of okay how bad is this person to be um 
How bad is this that someone is transfixed on one person at all times? Right. So, I found the gay stan accounts. And some of these guys, very handsome, very good looking. Mm -hmm. These I, I call the top tier gays or top, top shelf gays. Mm -hmm. They would post like shirtless pictures of themselves. The ones who go a little step further, you know, show their ass a little bit. So are these guys in good physical shape? Yeah. So they watch probably what they eat. They probably work out some. They'd say that they're probably range from 18 to 25. In their age? Yep. Obviously for legal reasons, but okay. Um, definitely not above 30. And we'll get that in a moment. Um. These guys usually post shirtless pictures of themselves. It's usually a double shot to prove two things, that it's actually them. And then they do kind of a different, slightly different pose in both pictures. So you can, so they're basically proving I'm real and this is what I really look like. And this is not Photoshopped and this is not stolen. It's not a stolen photo or all that crap. It's a different form of reality I've never and, thought before. And, they quote their favorite quote from their favorite song from their favorite artist and use that to describe a photo. And a lot of, most of the, what was the quote that was always used the most? Something about, uh, oh, Billie Eilish, there's a quote from one of her songs, and this is a song lyric from her, uh, might seduce your dad type. Mm. Is and, that a lyric? Yeah. Hmm. My something else, something, something, something might seduce your dad type. Uh, so millions. I mean, you could do that. You could look literally those words up, and you would have millions of pictures of guys. Okay. So I don't want to say that I connected with any of these people because I never got a reply back from one. Uh, it doesn't matter because they're not there for anybody but themselves. Well, they're, of course, a narcissist that acknowledges what they are. Exactly. And doesn't acknowledge anyone else. Right. So from there, I just kept going into just finding all these good-looking guys. And I have nothing and... against people that are good-looking. But when all you do is care about yourself and you're just there, to, oh, Beyond that, I'm sorry, go ahead real quick. You had something, you had and. Okay, that's all right. Um, from there, I fell into the only fans and your fan gaze, which basically sell videos and pictures of themselves for money to people who are lonely and willing to pay money. Mm -hmm. And that's my... AD Twitter experience. Uh, one person I ran into, I told you about this, was I guess we kind of actually connected because we're both into cosplay uh, superheroes. Um, There's a few other things that, that you've mentioned to me that you totally forgot to mention. I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it. I'm just, I'm just throwing this out there, this one thing which kind of connects with uh, what you said earlier. Uh, when I ask this person what they do for a living, because people always ask me when they chat me up, yeah. what do you do? What do you do? And I'm like, I'm a Walmart associate, and I'm also a cosmetologist. Now, I was a cosmetologist before uh, the COVID, at least. So I asked this guy back, I'm like, so what do you do? And his reply, <laughs> such a hard time even reading this. I'm reading this verbatim. I'm a social media expert. <laughs> Boy, would I love to be a social media expert. Wouldn't we all? You know what I like to be an expert for? An expert of breathing. <laughs> we'd love to be paid 50, 80 grand a year just to know how to breathe. Not just know how to breathe. The experience of breathing. Seriously, though. So what is a... What does a social media expert do? Well, let me read his reply to you. 
because I asked him what so what does being a social media expert entail verbatim <laughs> mostly research what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> I stopped replying after that why are you taking pictures for archive for archive <laughs> Now, okay, for that, for something as silly as that, that that's a perfect excuse for an answer, but really. For research. You can do this with a job. Mostly research. That would mean not all research. That would mean he's screenshotting stuff of people he likes and dislikes so oh he can God. one day uh, get back at them. Because that's the only thing why you would research anything about social media is the people you follow. Or he can use those pictures later on for catfishing someone else. That too. That's a social media expert. That's some, like, I've heard a lot of interesting jobs that people made up on, on the spot, but that is like one I never really thought anyone would use. What's my brother-in-law's one again? Your brother-in-law's. Yeah. Consultant. Oh, yeah, that's right. And we think he's a special agent or like a double agent to some country and whatnot because... That or he is running his only his an OnlyFans account. Oh, no. Because... I he, can't see that. He does work out quite a bit. He, he, is, he is well built, I have to admit. Not the most handsomest man. I still like to think he's a spy to some country or agency... He goes to a far-flung land, does his job for a weekend, and then says hi to the kids the rest of the week. <laughs> I think he's doing I absolutely it. love Ben, but he's an interesting character. Because we don't really know what he does for a no. living. I mean, I think he's doing gay porn. You really think so? Yeah. Are, are you absolutely serious? Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> It's possible. Maybe I'll run into him on Twitter eventually. Who knows? Oh, hey, Ben. Oh, hey, hey Kurt Ann. Nice dick pic. I mean, this is this is a man who, when they came to visit, both my, my parents, my sister's parents, and his parents, they both lived in the same city in Illinois. Uh, he would get there. He would lay down on the couch, and he would fall asleep. For six or seven hours. Straight on falling asleep. Basically until it was time to eat dinner and then go home. They didn't stay at a hotel anywhere or they just nope, simply just... came down to visit. He slept because he probably drove the whole way. No. No. I take it he and Heather took turns in driving. Oh, yeah. And the kids. Oh, like the kids helped too? Yeah. Three or four of them had licenses. That's odd. That's actually really odd. And almost kind of rude. It's mm. one thing to say, hey, can I like maybe take a nap in your guest room for a few hours just to kind of like catch up on sleep and whatnot? Yeah, That's that is one rude. thing. But when you sleep for six, seven hours when you're visiting, I'm sorry, no matter who you are, at least have some decency to have a bit of conversation while you're with us. Because yeah. if you sleep for a few hours, you eat dinner for about an hour or, or two, and then you're on your way back home, which from there to Minnesota is a long distance, meaning they're not, it's a quick bike to eat and then going back up. I mean, they That's drove, not much. They drove fast. It was only six hours and 45 minutes. Yeah, I, I can't zoom that fast. I am a zoomer, but I don't like speeding much more than five over. Yeah, they drove fast. fast. Oh. Well... You know what? They make good time that that way. It's okay. He's a home mechanic too, which so apparently if, ever, if his car ever breaks down, he just YouTube's it and fixes it. And then have it sit on on the driveway for six months before he gets an actual mechanic to actually fix it. Yeah, well, I, I totally have, forgot about that. I have so many problems with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even I know enough about mechanics to know what I'm capable of doing, but when I know there's certain that when it's out of your limitations. Whether if it's based on equipment needed or really I don't feel comfortable doing because I'd rather have a professional. Right. That's why I'm an amateur mechanic. I know enough to get by. However, when I know that the going gets tough, 
Unfortunately, the tail goes between the legs and say, I can't do this. Aww. It's better to admit that you can't do something and get someone else to do it than to say, oh, I can fix a head gasket and then realize the engine's torn apart. Now, car sits for about six months and everything else is all rusted up because you didn't even finish the job, so everything else is open to the elements. Yep. Um, okay, so there's actually a few things I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. regarding the LGBT community and I I should probably follow up on other communities I know people who are transgender who are lesbian in this community right obviously base I'm basing my opinion of this off of the people what you experience the people that I've experienced just through Twitter right and I don't I, I, I don't want to throw the gay community under the bus about this not in its entirety anyway Unless it's a really flaming pink fuzzy bus yes. with a bunch of penises attached to it, then you're all going to go all over that. But Ooh, yes. for some reason, I can only see this with the actual gay community of the overall community and a bit of the bi community as well. And why I say this is exactly the stuff you just described about your Twitter experiences on After Dark Twitter. Mm-hmm. These beautiful people who really, really work out, yep. who have giant dicks. If you have a giant dick in the gay community, you are everything. Oh, you're a god. Or if you're under the age of 30, which I don't believe in the term of gay death, but a lot of people do. Yep. Which, like, I'm not even 30, but that also bothers me of age is just a, age is just a social construct number that just tells you how old you really are, but doesn't really have anything to do with how you are as a person. Right. Yet all of a sudden, and I see this in like in the furry gay community, as soon as someone turns 30, you you either have two choices. People see you as a dad and they only go out with yeah. you because they see you as a dad, which I mean it might be great, but then again, they're going out with you for kind of wrong reasons. And the other is once you turn 30, a lot of people kind of ignore you. Because you're not the parting type, which I know a ton of people in their 30s yeah. that will out-drink a lot of people in their 20s under the bus oh, and do yeah. it with class. I will say that personally, for the longest time, I struggled with the whole dad uh, label, but now I'm okay with it. Awesome. So now so now you're dad loaf now. Yep, oh, dad loaf. Okay. My problem with the gay community, both furry and gay, and I think it's kind of a negative thing because now all of a sudden, if you're not under the age of 30, if your dick isn't the size of a wine bottle, yeah. and if you're not built like a Greek god, a lot of people are going to pass you over. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That's yeah. always certain. However... I see a lot of beautiful people in this community as as far as their personality, who they yep. really are, yeah. all these other physical attributes and age. You got to be legal, so eighteen plus. I'm saying this about eighteen plus. Just just making sure of that age is just a number. Beauty is just an abstract thing that you don't really need. And you know what? People with even average size dicks can wholly thrash the living hell out of people and still get a lot of enjoyment out of it. It's a very terrible stereotype, and it's 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 a big stereotype in the gay community that you must be these things to ever be noticed. Mm -hmm. And, as you mentioned, the top tier gays. Yeah. It's a perfect example of that being, like, in action, in real time. And these people don't have much substance beyond that. No. They see themselves as this pretty toy. It's almost like they don't even want to be seen as anything other than that, even. Exactly. Or they're embarrassed to be seen with anyone else. I don't, or think, it's, I don't think it's even that. They just want to be this unattainable... Thing that people <clears throat> hope to get. Or and can just desire and admire from afar. Which... Eh, I don't know. It's to sad. Me, That's sad in itself, really. It's sad because the community is supposed to be a welcoming place for everyone. And that's the same about furry community and even the furry gay community, which really is much of this fandom. I'm going to be very honest about that. 
it's not to say that you have to be gay. It's not that you have to be bi. You can be straight and enjoy this fandom. And that's perfectly okay. However, in the gay, even in the furry gay community, uh, everyone's interested about your dick size. And I'm going to be very frank. I don't want to see my friend's dicks. <laughs> um, because I, I will. You can send them to me. Okay. Send send all your penis to Kurt and Sarapulas. I will judge them. Well, not judge them. <laughs> You will actually loaf on no, them. <laughs> I will loaf on them and enjoy them. Um, it's <laughs> it's just it's it's an issue that I see that other kind of communities, and I don't know much about the other inter communities or sub sub communities of the LGBTQ communities, but it, it seems like with the gay community, which yeah, there are a lot of hot guys that are really really buff, like their nice sculpted tone. But at least they're friendly, and that's the only kind of people that I tend to gravitate to is if you're tethered to the earth, and I actually know some popufers and former popufers, that's a thing, a former popufer. That is certainly a thing because it hits everyone hard. Yeah. Um, there are some that actually are easy to get to know, can actually talk with you, and will not shun you away because you don't have a big Twitter following, which annoys me to no end. Yeah. And that's kind of the same way with poppy furs today where they're very superficial. They're very fake. In the same sense as just ordinary top tier gays where, yeah, they may have a nice giant dick or, you know, rock hard abs, a nice sculpted chest and whatnot, good looks, and <clears throat> 25 years old. But... When they, when they express themselves on the internet world as that, it appears so fake, so disgenuine, that it's kind of an eyesore. And it's not to say I hate all popufers. I think if you created something and you're proud of it and people can enjoy that same thing too, you're doing something good if you... Can interact with those that also enjoy the ride with you. Cooper Tom. Exactly. Perfect example of a poppy fur. That's not unquote. gone to his head. Oh. Do you know he finally uh, decided to audition for a voice acting gig? I noticed that today, yeah. I'm so proud of him for that. I've been bugging him for years. Me and many other people. Because he has a great voice. He does have a nice voice. And uh, I could easily see him doing that as a full-time job. So I wish him the best of luck with that. I really do. And I hope it's. I hope he's successful. I hope he loves it. It's a pretty competitive field. I've tried getting into the acting business a long time ago and realized yeah. how even competitive out in the Midwest it is. Yeah. Not, I'm not even talking about Hollywood. We were actually based out in Chicago. So we were actually going towards Chicago people to try to get into the movie making, producing, actor world as a start. And me and my dad found out after almost five years of dicking around, we realized it's more of a pain in the ass than we ever imagined it to be. And it's only in Chicago. In Hollywood, we would have gone nowhere. Mm -hmm. So we were... We were both amazed we got as far as we did in the movie acting producing world. That also includes voice acting. So I really, really wish him luck. Oh, yeah, I do too. Um, which I think with his voice, he could definitely get far with it because he does definitely. have a nice voice. So he has a lot of potential to get far into it if yep. he keeps plugging away. Yep. The idea is to not give up in it because. Right. If you don't. If this first gig it, doesn't pan out, don't give up. Head. Yep. Keep, keep trying. Yep. And that doesn't just apply to voice acting. It applies to anything and everything. Yep. Uh, Work-related. Um, quick rewind. Uh, one other point I wanted to make about the gay community and all that. Uh, we had actually talked about um, straights who like having sex with gay men. Yes. Remember I told you? There's a yes. I have a friend on Facebook... Um, but I don't feel like I should out his name. Hello, Gary. 
Hi, Gary. That's not really his name. No. Though. Actually, I guess, and I was afraid that was his real name, but... Hello, Gary. Gary, the pseudo-gay. So, Gary, um, actually connected with him, gosh, five, six years ago. Uh, he worked in a bar in Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin. It's a gay bar, and he's a straight male. A very handsome looking guy. Uh, very friendly, would just accept any any friend request that came his way on Facebook, regardless of whether he actually knew people or not. Because he knew why he was getting the requests. He's hot. They think he's hot. And they think he's gay. Or they hope he's gay. Or that, or that they can convert him. Right. <laughs> well, lo and behold, it's not so hard, apparently. Because I ran into him again, because he, he's one of those people that kind of disappears and reappears on Facebook, mm. and he finally came back, and then, uh, now mind you, he has a son and an ex-wife, or ex-girlfriend, I should say. So he has reproduced offspring. Two ex-girlfriends, I think, now. One ex that he had his son with, and then the next one that he tried to basically marry, and I don't think that it panned out. So now he's doing an OnlyFans account, and uh, for shits and giggles, I decided to look at it. And what did I find? Penis. Well, obviously penis, but beyond penis, I found videos of him getting sucked off by one of his male friends. No Open homo. No homo. Well, I think his friend was definitely homo. Oh, yeah. But, hey, if he's straight, now that kind of comes off wrong. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. If you're straight, but you get your dick sucked by a man, and you like it. I've actually known of straight guys who were experimental, were by curious, just to see, hey... I don't know if I like this. I want to try it out and just explore. Yeah. And I knew one example of one guy who just wanted to know if he liked it. The guy was, I think, either going down on him or was sucking him. Mm -hmm. Turned out in the middle of it, he couldn't. He 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 he, he couldn't continue. He didn't feel comfortable with it anymore. And says, "Hey, I'm sorry. Uh, I." It's just, this is something I can't do, but I'm glad to figure that out with someone that I can trust who allowed me to experiment this feeling with, to actually know that, hey, I tried, this isn't working out for me. Okay, at that point, you're certainly straight. You barely had a gay experience. You were actually trying to experiment to see if this is something you would like. You didn't. You get the scarlet V on your forehead because you know what? You like females. Yeah. So that I can understand. However, when you enjoy time after time getting sucked off by other guys and you enjoy it, <clears throat> and you enjoy the company of naked men. Now you can say, well, what about in high school or at college gym class where you have Naked dudes all the time. Yes. Well, nothing sexual about that, but you've definitely seen a male naked body before. You've seen your own body. I but hope. when you can actually enjoy the company of another male naked and you're naked with him, you definitely have some bi curious tendencies that exist. Yeah. Um, a little bit of history. Well, not really history. For, for the longest time, I was always bi-curious. I always called myself straight, but I always knew I wasn't because I always liked... Butts. Butts. I like butts specifically because you know what? Butts. Butts. Because they're nice. Um, I like butts because they're nice. Yeah. Um, but I didn't really have any experience with anything at that time. Yeah, there, yeah, there were women that I was dating with... Butts. Butts. 
And it wasn't until I discovered it with butts. And it was real nice. And that's when I started to come to form on who I really am. Because it's always something I've always felt. It wasn't until I realized, hey, this is something I can certainly do. This is something I can genuinely enjoy. And it doesn't bother me. I'm very comfortable with this being who I am. Because it's always something that I've always felt. Just never had a chance to do it with someone. So for the longest time, I thought I was always straight, but I always had, you know, tendencies to, like, men. And also, furry art doesn't help that, but that also helps me a lot. Yeah. Um, I was that one case where I always thought I was straight, and then turned out I'm actually bi. Because yep. I do like women, but I like men, too. Yep. Um, and I can accept that as who I am. And if it didn't work out, then I'd either be straight or if i did not like women be gay but i just identify as being bi it's just it's just a label it's not meant to really mean all that much but it's at least something i can associate to and that's something that we're like even in this day and age now uh people are pushing to get rid of labels now they don't even want labels which is maybe a which might be a turn in the right direction i i, I don't know how Either way, I don't know. I, I don't. Because my, because my what biggest... you told me back in the day that gay by street is just a label. It shouldn't be something that should totally define us in a iron box. No, definitely not. You can use it as a means to describe yourself, but it shouldn't be something you should always identify with. Right. If it's, that makes it's, sense. It's not who you are. It's part. It's just a part of you. Right. Um. One thing that I that we actually had discussed earlier too uh, uh, on the the bi subject really uh, about your friend who 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 really likes are we are we going away from that we're subject? going away from that gotcha okay uh, this is just more of a kind of a because there's a lot of people there's a lot of people that are very anti masculine in the gay community now. Uh, and there's in what way? there's a lot of gays that that don't like gay men that act straight. What? I know. You you just can't be perfect for everybody. Let's just put it that way. I'm gonna fuck you and your man pussy. <laughs> Where the hell is that from? Uh, oh, it's from the uh, the Bugs Bunny. Uh, oh, that's right. This bunny is. Hopping mad for your man pussy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Gay men trying to act straight. Not trying to. Like. There's. There's two. There's like two. Rivaling. Uh, stereotypes. There's the feminine. Gays. That don't like being. Discriminated against. For acting feminine. When that's just. How they come across. Right. Or I've how never, they naturally feel about themselves. I really have to push myself to really gay it up. I just, that's not me. I've never felt comfortable and I've never, it just doesn't come out natural. I have to really be drunk. I feel like in the D&D &D sense of the form, I feel like a, what's it, uh, a neutral, a true yeah. neutral or yes. something like that. Dead center. But I stay there. I'm not hyper masculine because that's just not my character. Yes. However, I'm never submissive or flamboyant. I can't. Yeah. It's just not who I am. So, but being something that I'm not just feels wrong to me. Right. So obviously, there's the the very masculine, big buff guys mm, that big butts. that don't like the feminine types of gays that just don't find them attractive. And then vice versa. There's the very feminine, thin, almost look like a woman. They're they're almost uh, a femboy. Yeah, femboys. Yeah, and they have femboys in, in the in the fandom as well uh, that don't uh, necessarily like uh, masculine. Yeah, and they don't like being like 
you maybe have to wonder now, maybe for masculine not liking femboys, that's kind of interesting. But I'm wondering for femboys, because I do know some femboys. Basically, it's each group judging each other. Exactly. And there might be some backstory with some of that with individuals where uh, I do know some femboys and, you know, I always will accept anyone regardless of how they who act. you are, yeah. what you are. I'm going to treat you the same way because that's how I, w I would like to be treated is to be accepted for who I am and exactly. I will accept who you are for who you are. As long as you accept me, I accept you. Right. And... and how you act has nothing has no effect on my judgment. And I have to wonder that if some femboys that act femboy, but just just because they are, there might they may have gone out with someone or knew someone who was masculine, right? Who over abused that, called them a woman or do this and that. Right, and that they could have maybe had a bad experience. Right, and that actually leads into my my next statement, which we were talking about as well, where uh, femininity. Uh, is associated, I should say, wrongfully associated with being weak. That too. I absolutely hate that. Which I do too. I, it's not fair or right, and it's not accurate. No. I, I, And it's with the gay community where, let's say, two tops get into a relationship. They don't like bottoming. However, in order to make something work sexually... Both of them are going to have to bottom somehow. However, just because you bottom doesn't make you seem weaker than the other. It's just it's just right. something you do. There's mask bottom. There's mask bottoms. Yeah. And actually, really, in reality, from what I've seen in the gay community, I've seen more feminine tops than mask bottoms. Yes. Yep. So, Especially in the furry community where, oh boy, juicy butts and like, hey, I'm attached as leash to you and I may punch the shit out of you until you bleed me, sort of masculine bottoms, which oh my. is quite hot. And then you've got, you know, the um, not just feminine or just submissive bottoms. Now, the thing that I, that I have an issue with yes. is... The and, and this is in the gay community, but also in the furry community too, where there's obviously more tops than bottoms. There are definitely bottoms out there that just want a bottom, so there is that camp. I thought it was the opposite, though. I thought there was more bottoms than there are tops. Actually, in this community, there are more tops than there are bottoms. It's the same with the gay community, because no one wants to take dick. Are you sure? For the same reasons that we were explaining that... It, to be seen bottoming means that you must be either a, a woman or weak. The gay bottom mafia? That's that's an exception. Um, as I said, there are full genuine tops, there are switches, then there are bottoms. And then mm -hmm. out from that, there might be tops that would only bottom because they know that it's the thing to do to help a, to help a relationship work. They know that they don't may not like the bottom, but they'll do it because they love the other person. Um, and then bottoms, most bottoms don't care about topping. Well, not they may have urges that they may want to top here and there, but most bottoms that I have met, especially ones that are absolutely huge between their legs, mm -hmm. a lot of them said, yeah, I actually don't understand why. That anyone that I am with, I just want to be a bottom. But then what, the moment they take a look at my big giant schwanz, they say, hey, I want you to top me. And they say, I don't know, that's just not my thing. There are some bottoms that really don't care about topping at all. Uh, which for any top in this community is great because that means they don't ever have to bottom. It's just in the furry community, there is a lot of tops. But they always associate being a bottom for being weak or, you know, hate being seen as the bottom of a relationship, which honestly, if if you're in a relationship where people always see you as the bottom or as the top, there's something unhealthy going on there anyway. It's just a sexual act. It should not be who you are. It's just a part of who you are, but it's not who you are. Right. 
Uh, and I think furries and the gay community put too much emphasis on that, and I kind of want to see that changed. Um, you can be a full-on top. You are really only interested for the tail hole, but you will bottom because, you know, if it means to make your mate or your boyfriend happy and you want to show them how much you care about them by allowing that to happen, then so be it. Uh, right. You may not like it. You may not call yourself a switch, but you'll be, you'll be a top with, um, not bottoming tendons tendencies, but you know a bit of tolerance to it. But, and lots of butts. Lots um, of butts. All the butts. I really hate the idea that, in both furry community and the gay community, that if you're seen as the bottom in a relationship, which I always hate, that's why, if, which is like my favorite, you hate being piece. seen. You hate being seen as the bottom, or you hate being seen what? It's just a lot of people always assume, oh hey, in this art, in my this couple is is always seen as one person is always the bottom, one person is always seen as the top. So they will always assume this person's a bottom until they don't, you know, they don't get to know the person until they realize, oh, hey, yeah, this, that's just simply art. Um, the person in real life may actually be a switch. It's just like but it, in it, art form, they are always seen as the bottom, which can really hurt people. Right. It's just like with us. Uh, I think a lot of people wondered who uh, was the top and oh, the, yeah. the bottom in our relationship. And so... And a bit of back, a bit of backstory. Me and Kurt Ann used to date. We dated for about five years. It's been fun. Didn't work out, but we're good friends still. Yes. And for many years, a lot of people always came up to us, and I always hated it. I don't know about you, because to me, it doesn't matter, and it's not important. It didn't bother me, but I will say one thing for sure. What? You guys will never know who topped and who bottomed. Exactly, because you know what? It's no one's business. Yeah, that's right. They always say, so uh, So uh, I take it you're the top in this relationship, like, am I? Um, does it actually really matter? Do you really need to know? Um, yeah, there's art, but you know what? Art doesn't always tell a full picture. And often enough, it'll tell a false picture. Well, even in our art, you never really knew. You never got a clear picture of, of who did what. Exactly. Um, and for some reason, we... People obsessed, I don't know about you, but people always ask me. They always seem to obsess about who did what. And it's like, um, we both do equally. It doesn't matter. And it still doesn't matter. Yeah. And there's and one person still actively asks, so who did more of what? And like, uh, we actually, we, we both did stuff at the same time. Um, I don't know. It's, for some reason, people really want to know who tops in a relationship, which is really not the most important part yeah. about a relationship. Um, yeah, each individual person has preferences. That still exists in a relationship. But does it really matter in the end when you when it's portrayed on the world? Normally, I don't mention anything in a relationship. Because you know what? It's not my place to describe someone else in my relationship on who they are because that would be making assumptions on them mm -hmm. which makes them look bad which makes me look bad right and then vice versa frankly no one really needs to know right it's just furries are thirsty and oddly enough they just want to know who tops yep which then means they know who bottoms which somehow gains knowledge on their part on they know us better which really, it's just an act that you do. It doesn't describe who you are. It's just something you do. That's right. Which, again, goes back to the whole point of in the gay and furry community, um, there needs to be less emphasis that being a bottom makes you weak. If you can take a dick in the ass, you're a pretty strong person to be. I'd say so. Um, because I'm going to say this. Taking a dick up the butt isn't very easy. Those who absolutely enjoy it always definitely show that. But taking a dick up the butt takes a certain amount of bravery. Only real men take dicks up their butts. Exactly. Um, 
so when you really think about it, does really being now, oh, here's another thing that also pisses me off too mm. about bottoms in this community is that if they associate you as a bottom, like, oh, there is an actual legit furry who really prefers to bottom. Says, yeah, yeah, I tried topping. It doesn't work for me, but I enjoy bottoming. doesn't bother me if I just bottom. I really hate it when they, like, when some other furry knows, oh, yeah, um, this person is a bottom, so I'm going to assume him as being submissive. Now you're going to assume a characteristic on someone that you think, oh, yeah, this person's a bottom, so must they must be seen as a submissive person, which really, as what you mentioned before, there can be really dominant bottoms. Oh, yeah. So you can absolutely get something wrong right off the bat, potentially damage a friendship because you assume something wrong of them mm -hmm. or because someone... Like, hey, I'm a big burly wolf with giant pecs and whatnot. And whether if he's a top, a switch, or a bottom, whatever, it would be his, his preference. But then all of a sudden you say, oh, yeah, you must be a really dominant wolf. He could be submissive or he could be neutral. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. And I hate the assumption of this fandom that is kind of a cancer in, in, in itself, and I kind of wish it just kind of go away. Definitely. Um, really, what you do in the bedroom should really be only be kept in the bedroom. Yep. Unless it's in art form. And even still, when you get art, definitely let people know what you want for art or between yep. the parties. Yep. Um, so, with that being said, let's deviate from that subject. Oh. And I want to talk about what we do in the back room in the fresh department of Walmart mm -hmm. in New Berlin. So the song Rain On Me by Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande. Which, oh, dear Lord. Which is really a great song, a good I song. must say. Uh, if we had had Gay Pride this year, it would have been Gay Pride Anthem for sure. And plus 2020. It's a nice, it's a nice even year if you think about it. Yep. Unfortunately, you know, because of the vid and all that, no gay pride, no anything really. Cancel year, boo. Cancel year. Uh, but I, I don't know. I was going through it in my head because I have that entire album on my phone, and me and uh, Lauren at work uh, when we get in the back room cooler uh, sing. And we don't just sing, we like scream sing or opera sing. These same so songs. Not who's scream. Not who's scream. You want opera. Or like Alley Cat singing. Aww. Basically. So then it's uh, slightly aggressive, but quite passionate. Uh, until the shoe gets thrown or the boot gets thrown at us. Aww. But in my boredom, I was going through in my mind the lyrics, just the bass refrain lyrics of rain on me and i kept thinking god is she singing about being peed on <laughs> so now lauren calls it the golden shower song <laughs> <laughs> so we're singing about pee on me <laughs> basically yeah, as other walmart customers walk by oh, they can't hear us thank god because could you imagine it's the cone of silence Oh, yeah. Uh, after that, we went into, like, a complete, like, I don't know. When when, when me and Lauren worked together, um, we, our minds are completely in the gutter. Because we're it's lifting. It's a fun moment. We're lifting 40, 50 pound crates of vegetables. And this is our only um, means of entertaining ourselves. So, I brought up bukkake. Oh, God. <laughs> which I believe is the, the act of being shit upon or shit at. No, no, it's um, the act of coming on to one person from multiple people. Oh, that's right. Bukkake is... Yeah. So, bukkake is pretty much so what's that the... one furry that likes to get wetted oh, yeah. on by other males when they're excited. So, what is it called when, uh, when you like to be shit on? 
I don't even want to know because it's just not one of my things. Because if you like that, that's fine. But it's yeah, something I've never really... Definitely no judgment here. Right. What you're into is what you're into. But it, it just was what you're into is what we happen to be discussing at work in my back room. Yeah. Should, I, was... should I just call it <laughs> explosive pudding? <laughs> uh, but... Would you like to participate in the explosive pudding? Ooh, I would like to. I remember finding a video of a guy. He had this really nice glass coffee table. Uh -huh. And he would... Crawl take, under? He would lay under it. So that he, could, he was looking up at the ceiling. And he would... Like, all the different people at the party would come over. Take a they, deuce. On the table. Where his face would be. Well, at least they found a good way of cleaning, but still. Oh. Well, who said they were cleaning? They don't clean? I don't know. Oh, no, it's a center. They didn't... Instead of a cot, no. <laughs> okay, I, again, there's they... absolutely no judgment, but I'll, all I can think of is after a shit party, <laughs> after a weekend goes by, you just kind of have it sit there. It's like a coffee book, except for those like, oh, yes, this, this is a really nice mound. Um. <laughs> There is there is a Marine Corps buddy of mine who I like to call El Nasto Grande because he would do anything for money. And I mean anything. And while he was in basic training on Paris Island, he, uh, he was able to get people to bet $200 that he would get massively deuced on by another guy which apparently in basic training, if you don't shit for a while, you get plugged up a bit. Yeah. And he says, hey, you know what? $200. Uh, for $200, I'll have some dude take a deuce on my chest. And they're like, okay, deal. So they came up with the $200 in basic training. I don't know how they would get the money through... Um, because it's kind of contraband in to have money in barracks, but I don't know how they ended up getting it passed by. Yeah. So there he is laying on the floor in the middle of his bay, and the entire barracks is like shouting, yeah, 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 or like shit on him, shit on him, or deuce, 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 deuce. And the guy who was about to uh, deuce good old El Nasto Grande couldn't produce mm. he was getting nervous All and the pressure he was the pressure of him deucing on a person who's building up pressure as it is he says oh i can't do it man and el nasta grande below him is like saying hey man there's 200 dollars right on this you, you gotta shut on me now <laughs> <laughs> oh. so the other thing that we had that we were going through uh you know what's funny is we talk about shit in every podcast. We do. Literally on every podcast. Literally every podcast. And it's not even planned. We just talk about it anyway. Oh, it's planned. It's oh, it's planned. because poop is funny. Literally in my notes, <laughs> it says right here, spewing shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's paint the walls. Let's paint the walls. Oh, no, that's not. Oh. A trouble hard A moscado, moscado, moscado. Oh. Um, uh, no, uh, remember when I mentioned about the guy that, that I said hello to, the customer, and I said, how are you today? And he was like, I'd be fine if I didn't have to wear this. What? What did, what did I say? I've, I'd be I fine if I didn't this. have to wear this face diaper. Oh, God. And I always do this because I'm not an opportunist. I always come up with what I should have said. Like minutes, hours later, because I'm just not quick on my feet like that. I'm not either. Um, I have to have notes or something. But uh, <laughs> later on, I thought about it and I thought, what does that mean? Face diaper. Does it mean he's spewing shit? Shit out of his mouth? Yes. That's so funny. It's like, it's like listening to a bunch of copious things coming out of someone's mouth, little trash coming out of their mouth. It's like, oh, that's where it's supposed to go. Yep. Yeah. 
Are you spewing shit now? No. Okay, well, while the Hoosk is doing whatever he's doing, I will go on my own rant about, uh, basically, my life and Walmart and why, uh, it's not the best job in the world, but I've said this before, I'm an opportunist. Make the most of every opportunity in life, regardless of how shitty it is, because um, people pick up on that. You know, people pick up on how you handle yourself, professionalism and all that. Uh, it can help raise the morale of, of an entire team of people. Uh, being negative all the time at a shitty job is so easy to just sit there and complain. I can complain with the best of them. But if you can somehow make the shitty job tolerable, uh, man, it makes a difference for everybody else around you. And now I'm numbing. And I don't know where the hoosk went. I'm all alone. I'm flying so low. Ah. Oh, by the way, today's episode is unofficially brought to us by Sam's Choice. Creamy cashew butter. That's right. Not peanut butter. Cashew butter today, folks. This stuff is so creamy. It's amazing. If only you could see it. And taste it. It's beautiful. Actually, it's not that beautiful. It actually kind of looks like diarrhea a little bit. Oh, no. What are we talking about now? <laughs> I was oh, looking, now you're talking about cashew butter, and now it's like... Oh. It turned into shit again. Oh, no. What, what have we done here? No, literally. Look at this beautiful, creamy cashew butter. That's incredibly runny. Is that supposed to be like that? Well, I stirred it up a little bit. It could be stirred more. I wonder if it's supposed to be slightly colder so that it kind of, like, <clears throat> solidifies like butter. Doesn't it look like diarrhea? Oh, God. Now it's like, do you really want to eat this now? And he did. So, here's a thought that I've had for a, a little while. What's that? Is, um, so, for those who are in the seaweed furs area that know about me, that I run the Bonfire Meats, which is kind of the larger larger attended events in this area or at least as far as I know it is the biggest event here and people have always joked about who's con this who's con that it's like oh yeah it's kind of like a convention because I get so many people be in my backyard that um, it becomes like a mini convention I have a fire team I have people who help me run my meat because it's gotten so big that I can't be everywhere all at once. So in a sense, I can feel like a con chairman just alone in that. And that's only for like chairman six... Chairman Hoosk. Chairman Hoosk. So I've really actually considered this a lot and just, just playing around with the idea. Nothing really serious is I would not mind running a convention. There's no charity involved. I don't really want to do with so much donation. It's just more of a fun weekend. And then pandemic hits, like, oh, okay, well, uh, obviously we, we can't do that now. Um, I was thinking about renting a suite in a hotel just to kind of have, like, a whole weekend of just gaming, small fursuit parade of one or two people. <laughs> And just kind of just do con things like, hey, you know what? I'm going to doodle for something. I don't know what it is, 
but it's going to be an art show of everyone's doodles. Um, just funny, silly stuff like that. And I've done panels in the past at cons, and I thought, what if, if anyone can do their own little mini convention in the sense that they're the only staff member there is, you don't just have staff members, or if there is, you have panelists. The idea that I'm going with is you have one room, you have one video source. You have a camera or your webcam on your laptop, whatever. You just want to do with a group of friends a series of panels that you will record live as in like live as it was, not obviously live with audience and whatnot, or stream live. Yeah, I guess you, you, you could do it live, but that'd be nuts. You collect a series of videos that you end up recording, saving, editing, whatnot. Then you wait for a special weekend where, through the course of a whole year, you can compile all of these videos together onto one weekend and have, hey, internet who's con? And then you start uploading, or you have videos scheduled to be released on certain times during a day where you can literally have it run like a convention where you have different panels for different things. I don't know, it's just kind of like an idea of, you know, <clears throat> there might be other ways to how to run a convention, whether if it's with charity or not. There are different ways on how you can do that. I don't know, it's just a fun, fuzzy feeling. That would be fun. Just to have maybe a maximum of like 10 or 12 people to do panels with. Just talk about anything that seemed interesting or what they may have knowledge on. So is this something that people would actually go to or is this something that people would have to tune into? Tune into or watch online. So nothing they would actually go to. Well, in the sense of what's going on today with pandemic, probably tune online. Um, I may have venue for who's con in the future. <laughs> So, that's a small possibility that can happen. Um, I have more planning to do, obviously, but that might take a long time before it ever comes to that. Uh, the idea is to have a loose, organized event without too many strings attached, which can get complex. Yeah, it's just a fun, fuzzy thought of, hey, you, you know what? A lot of these fur cons begin out of fur meets anyway. So if they aspired from that alone, hell, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've actually talked on, I think we really touched base on a lot of good subjects today. Mm -hmm. Besides... Talking about how crappy our jobs are, but then again, sometimes that can get pretty amazing too, or interesting, for at least what it's worth. So, you got anything to say? Bukaki. Oh my god, Bukaki all over the place. Oh, it's raining men, literally. Mm, rain on me. Rain on me. So, oh god, so imagine if it was a Lady Gaga song where it's just like a dude in the middle of a dark room and then all of a sudden... Come on me, bro. Then all of a sudden, silhouettes of penises just coming out of the darkness. I'm sure that'll be done. Maybe Willem will do it. And you know what? The whole music video is just this poor guy. Maybe Willem Belly will do it. Shout out to Willem Belly. If you're listening, Willem, please make Come On Me. I'm come. thinking of the AHA song. Mm. Come on me, come on me, <laughs> come on me, in a day or two. <laughs> I think we've probably run out of ideas. I think so, so. too. I'm this... going gonna, gonna to end up uh, going into work tomorrow, I think. I'm surprised. Working... I just, my pants. <laughs> <laughs> No, surprise poos at work. Oh, oh, you're going into work tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. You are a brave poos. This last paycheck was really good. I wanted it again. 
hey, you know what? This location in particular said overtime's not an issue, so you may as well take advantage of That's it. That's right. Yoink. Yeah. At that point, you may as well loaf there and just loafed in the rafters. Do you know where? Do you know where Curtin is? Oh, um, is he in the freezers? No. Did you check up in the rafters? Oh, there he is. It's a loaf. He's afraid of zucchini now. Yep. Well, I guess with this, this has been another episode of the Zooming Who's podcast. And again, yes. I am your host, Dustin Husky. I'm Curtin Sourpuss. We'll see you next time.